now we will talk about the dual nature of few glands okay what is the meaning of dual that means double nature of few glands okay that means just now we have studied about the glands then i uh, discussed uh, i mean to say we have discussed that the glands can be of two type it can be exocrine and it can be endocrine glands isn't it now exocrine are the one which secrete their juices or their products into the ducts and the endocrine are one which secrete directly their products into the blood now can uh, there be any gland which performs you know in the both way it can be exocrine also and it can be endocrine also can it is can it be possible is it possible so yeah student there are few glands which x as you know exocrine sometimes and endocrine sometimes or they both the parts are very very active okay exocrine gland part is also very active that means they secrete their products into the tubes also and in the blood also they release their products so we will talk about the dual characteristic or dual nature of the okay dual function of few glands okay dual function of few glands okay so what i am talking about i am talking about dual function of few glands okay now which in which way i am talking like in what con uh, what is the topic like what i'm saying dwell of what so i mean to say those glands which acts as endocrine as well as exocrine glands or those glands which x which performs on both the ways you know as they can be exocrine and they can be endocrine and they are there are isn't it there are certain glands which x as the endocrine glands also and the exocrine gland also so first of all dual function of few glands in this i will write there are few glands which x as n exocrine as well as and do crime glands okay so what we are talking about we are talking about few glands which x as both exocrine and endocrine glands okay so to begin with in this the first example i'll be talking about is what pancreatic okay pancreas and pancreatic tubes and ducts and all this okay so the first gland which i am talking about is pancreas hmm now pancreas we will read the situation after this like where they are located okay where is their place so we'll talk about that in detail but now for now what we are talking how does it have different double role so pancreas is the one which performs as an exocrine as well as an endocrine glands also okay so pancreas how does it performs exocrine pancreas so pancreas secrete pancreatic juice okay now pancreas secrete pancreatic juice and it goes into what pancreatic duct that means this is secreted into what it is secreted into the duct so pancreas secrete pancreatic juice okay and it is secreted in where pancreatic duct that means we are talking about in duct isn't it and where does it goes it reaches the elementary canal okay there we know how the digestion takes place okay so i'm talking about the few glands which x 
in the dual way that means they are acting as an exocrine glands also and they are acting as an endocrine glands also. Now in this category the first one which we are discussing is pancreas. So when pancreas secrete pancreatic juice, when pancreas secrete pancreatic juice and where does it is, where it is secreted? It is secreted in a tube which is known as pancreatic tube. Okay. Now when it is secreted in that tube then what is happening children? That is here. Okay. This juice will go, it will become the part of the elementary canal. It will be secreted by reaching elementary canal. And here in this case, pancreas is acting as an exocrine gland. How it is acting children? It is acting as an exocrine gland. Okay. So pancreatic juice is secreted. It goes into pancreatic duct. Okay, which becomes the part of the elementary canal, which becomes the part of the elementary canal. So here pancreas is acting as an what? Exocrine gland. Pancreas here is acting as an exocrine gland where the secretion is being secreted. Okay, what is the secretion? Pancreas is the gland, it is secreting pancreatic juice, it is secreted in the tube which is known as pancreatic duct. Okay. Now from the pancreatic duct this juice goes to the elementary canal ultimately okay. it becomes a part of that and in this case the pancreas acts as an exocrine gland. Okay, here it is acting as an exocrine gland because why it is it acting children? Because what is happening? The secretion is been secreted into the duct. Okay, then here it is acting as an endocrine or exocrine. It is acting as an exocrine gland, isn't it? Now we will talk about again pancreas, but how does it acts in the internal or endocrine gland. So, you know pancreas secrete a hormone. Okay, this we will be reading in detail in the next part, but I will just write a short note of this. So, how does pancreas act as an endocrine gland? Okay, when does it act as an endocrine gland? Pancreas is acting as an endocrine gland when it secretes when it is secreting insulin, when it is secreting hormone insulin, okay, when it secretes insulin, what is insulin? It is a hormone, where it is working, it controls the sugar, isn't it? We will be discussing all this thing in detail in the next, just after this. So, just I am talking about the gist. What just children that well function of few glands, there are few glands which act as what endocrine glands also and exocrine glands also. Now how does it works? Like take example of pancreas, pancreas when secrete pancreatic juice, it is secreted through a, it passes through a tube which is known as pancreatic duct and then it is what acting as an exocrine gland because its product is flowing into the duct. Now when does pancreas acts as an uh, endocrine gland? It acts as an endocrine gland because it's also, it also secrete a, a hormone named insulin. What is the role of insulin children? I think you all might be knowing the role of insulin. If uh, insulin won't be there in our body then the sugar level will increase in our body. Okay, insulin keep check on the level of the sugar. Okay, it keeps on breaking the sugar. So, when insulin is not there in the body, then extra injections have been taken by the patient to keep control on the sugar, isn't it? And if it exceeds, if the sugar exceeds, then the patient or the person suffers from diabetes. Okay, so we are discussing all this thing in the next part. So, this is the point which I wanted to 
discuss that there are certain glands which acts both as an endocrine as well as an exocrine gland ok. So, next can be taste, taste is an ovaries ok. As we have discussed testes is present only in males and ovaries are present only in females ok. Testes secrete hormone testosterone ok. Testosterone is secreted by the testes which is what? is responsible for all the male characteristics which is seen in the male like beard, moustaches ok, uh, all the different sexual characteristics the you know heavy uh, voice. So, all these more hair on the body, so all these characteristics comes into male because of the presence of this hormone that means here it is acting as an endocrine gland here it is acting as an endocrine gland, but when it ok, but when it releases sperms ok, when it release the sperms ok, when the sperms are released then what here it is acting as here it is acting as an exocrine gland because it these sperms are being released into a duct ok, sperms are being released into a duct. Now, in the same way ovaries when we talk about ovaries are present only in females they secrete a hormone estrogen and even progesterone ok. So, these this is what again a female hormone, female hormone means it is not having any sex but these hormones are present only in females is not it these hormones are responsible for what all the female type of characteristic like soft voice ok that means high pitched voice uh, then broad uh, hips then uh, development of the memory glands. So, all these are what responsibility of estrogen ok it is present where only in females secreted by what ovaries. So, here it is what it is acting as an endocrine gland, then where it is acting exo as an exocrine gland when it releases the female eggs or the ovas ok, female eggs or ova or ova ok. Now, so here what will happen here we are talking about ovaries which are present only in females. Now, here ovaries secrete a hormone which is known as what it is known as it is known as estrogen. Now, these are ok what are responsible these uh, this hormone ok this one and this one they are hormones here this hormone they deal with all the male characteristic it brings the male characteristic in the particular boy here this one is responsible for bringing female characteristic in the particular female ok. So, these are hormones they are secreted without the ducts they are secreted without any they are coming they are just they just get mixed up with the blood ok. But when they release sperm when the testes release sperm then it is released by duct and so here it will be acting as an exocrine gland ok and here ovaries when they release eggs. So, here they will be acting as an exocrine gland because these release of ovas, these release of sperm will be where it will be released it will be released in the ducts ok this will be released in the ducts. So, this is how there are some glands which act both as an exocrine glands as well as an endocrine glands. Okay. So, we have discussed what we have discussed there are certain glands which act both as an exocrine as well as an endocrine glands. When we talk about pancreas, pancreas acts as an exocrine gland when it secretes pancreatic juice 
okay this pancreatic juice is secreted through a duct or into the duct which is known as pancreatic duct okay then it comes through the where elementary canal now here it is acting as an exocrine gland but when the pancreas secrete a hormone insulin which keeps check on the sugar is here it is acting as an endocrine gland now the second example i am talking about what testes now here these are present only in males when they secrete hormones testosterone then it is these this hormone sorry this hormone is responsible for developing male characteristic male features in the boys okay so it is a hormone here it is acting as an endocrine gland but when it secretes when it releases pumps when the pumps are developed uh, formed okay then these pumps are released into the duct and so here again it is acting as an exocrine gland now ovaries which are present only in females these are responsible for the secretion of the hormone estrogen these this hormone estrogen is responsible for bringing all the femaleish type of characteristic into a female like high pitch you know like uh, the voice is you know soft and pitch is high then the release of uh, eggs when it comes to this one then what is happening the eggs are released into again a duct so here it will be acting as a exocrine gland so definitely there are certain glands which acts as an endocrine as well as an exocrine glands whenever the secretion is there through some duct whenever the secretion is there through some duct then it is known as which kind of gland it will come under the category of exocrine glands whenever the secretion is directly going to the blood whenever the secretion get mixed up directly with the blood whenever the hormones are secreted and hormones will be secreted only by endocrine glands by the ductless gland it get mixed up with the blood so in that case then what will be the what we can say that these are endocrine glands okay so this is how there are few glands which acts as an endocrine as well as an exocrine uh, glands okay so please just note it down and now we'll talk about definitely we are going to talk about the, uh, the like where are the places how the glands where are the these glands are located okay so students now we will talk about various glands okay various endocrine glands how they are working like which hormone are they secreting obviously see it is not in you know it's not in too like it's not uh, we are not going to detail it too much but still like you know uh, which gland is situated where sometimes it happens you know i'm going to say something and something else is coming out from my mouth so anyhow we are going to discuss which uh, like some important glands and few important uh, hormones secreted by them okay so we won't be reading all this thing in detail very very detail but still some uh, superficial things or some you know, gisted out things we are going to discuss over here so first of all i will talk about the glands see in our body there are various like we have many endocrine glands maybe the pineal hmm? maybe a hypothalamus pituitary maybe thyroid parathyroid okay ovaries testes pancreas so there are various glands in our body all these glands are situated at particular place hmm? so we just we will discuss the location of all these glands so now for for trying for explaining you the location of this these glands it is important to draw a rough i am saying again that i am going to draw a very rough diagram so that you know it gives a perfect idea that where which gland is situated and from here what is the target part of this uh, you know hormone secreted by this or uh, what is which area which part is the target area and from like you can understand then that where the gland is situated and where is the result area so we'll just talk about the glands we'll discuss about the 
several glens okay so i'm drawing over here and as i told i'll be drawing very very rough diagram so here is the here one glen is there and here is also one glen okay so now this one is pineal gland okay this one is pineal gland i'll be discussing whole if it is visible from here a little bit shift it more towards the side okay so this one is what pineal gland after this here is hypothalamus gland children it is hypothalamus gland okay these two glands are situated inside the brain pineal gland and hypothalamus gland are situated inside the where inside the brain now pineal gland is you know it is actually considered as a vestigial organ now what is the meaning of vestigial organ children the organ which was in use once upon a time in some you know course of development it has become now vestigial which is of no use now okay so as we all know appendix is also an vestigial organ in human beings isn't it so and it is considered that this gland pineal gland is a vestigial organ or in the other way we can say that we do not know the function of pineal gland till now okay after this is hypothalamus gland now hypothalamus gland is a gland which is situated in the brain is it it hypothalamus is a gland which is situated in the brain now what is the function of hypothalamus children the function of hypothalamus is to secrete certain uh, chemicals to secrete certain hormones which, which can uh, you know activate the pituitary gland or which can deactivate the pituitary gland in simple language i'll tell you children that in the simplest part simplest language that hypothalamus can activate or it activate the pituitary gland it regulates the activity of pituitary gland okay so first of all we are talking about pineal gland so what shall i write in the pineal gland children first of all the position that it is present in the brain isn't it in the brain but the function is not known isn't it function unknown or even it is considered as an vestigial organ is it clear children we are talking about the first gland which is pineal gland pineal gland is situated inside the brain but as we do not know we do not know much about the pineal gland it is considered as a vestigial organ or sometimes even we can say that we do not know the function of the pineal gland now what's the meaning of vestigial organ children the organ which is present in our body which is not in working condition or organ present in a body which is in not working condition say for uh, example the appendix the vermiform appendix in human beings isn't it the vermiform if there is a pain in the appendix okay then it is cut and thrown out but why because it doesn't have any kind of use in our body it doesn't has any kind of use in our body so appendix is what it is a vestigial organ what is the function of uh, appendix children where it is present you um, know you know where it is in a working condition in the ruminants for the digestion of the cellulose okay so coming back to the point over here pineal gland it is present in the brain function is unknown now we'll talk about the second gland which is hypothalamus now this hypothalamus gland is also children it is present inside the brain okay it is present 
inside the brain. Okay, it is present inside the brain and it secretes. Okay, it secretes. Okay, what just now I told children that this hypothalamus is controlling, controlling in the sense you know, like it is, uh, I can say it regulates sometime. Okay, so hypothalamus is a gland which is responsible for secretion of releasing and inhibitory hormones. It secrete releasing, I will explain you children, do not worry, releasing and inhibitory hormones. Now, what is the meaning of these words? Okay, what is the meaning of all these words that it regulates, okay, that it regulates, it regulates the secretion of pituitary gland. So, many a times it is heard, we all know that pituitary gland is a master gland. Pituitary gland is the one which is control, which is controlling, okay. Pituitary gland is the one which is controlling all other glands or the secretion depends upon the pituitary gland, isn't it? But children at the same time, pituitary gland is also, you know, uh, its action are also being guarded by somebody else. Who is that? Hypothalamus is the one which is responsible for the secretion of releasing and inhibitory hormones. Okay, what does it do? It regulates the secretion of pituitary gland. Okay, so in simple language, then how can I explain this? That when pituitary is secreting some hormones, so before it secretes the hormones, it needs that uh, activation. Okay from the hypothalamus. It will be in uh, quite detail in other classes in 10th standard. So, we will not go in so much of detail. We will just talk about what first gland, pineal gland which is present inside the brain. It is a vestigial organ or vestigial gland or still its function is unknown. Now, second is hypothalamus gland children. It secretes what releasing and inhibitory hormones. Okay, that means it regulates the secretion of pituitary gland. How does it, uh, how can we explain this further? That the action of the release of the hormones of the pituitary gland depends upon the hypothalamus. That means it controls, hypothalamus controls. What does hypothalamus control children? Hypothalamus controls the pituitary hormones. So, hypothalamus controls the pituitary hormones. Okay, it controls the, what it controls the pituitary hormones. Okay, so this is about the two glands, first is pineal gland and second is hypothalamus gland. Now, we will talk about our third gland which is what pituitary gland, this one. This is for children, pituitary gland. Okay, now we all know that it is also known as master gland, isn't it? Pituitary gland is also known as master gland. Why, why is it known as master gland? Because it controls all the other secretion, all the other. So, it controls other glands also. So, now what is pituitary doing children? Pituitary, where is it present? So, just have a look. Pituitary is present just below the brain. Okay, so it is present, it is present just rather I will rub and write again you know on the uh, because I will not be able to write in detail about the pituitary. 
So we'll just discuss a little and I'll rub this and then we'll talk about pituitary gland, okay? Because now you are very well aware that this is the brain and below this brain is what pituitary gland is present over here. So what is pituitary children? It is, a, it is also known as master gland as it controls the various glands, okay? Now, pituitary glands also secrete many hormones, okay? But we will talk only about the growth hormone children. Growth hormone is a very important hormone which is secreted by pituitary gland. Okay, when we were discussing about the hormones, we have read this that the hormone secreted by the glands are in very small quantity or we can say that the glands secrete hormones in a very less quantity. If the quantity increases or decreases, it is unfruitful, isn't it, for the organism. So, when I am saying, first point what I am saying children that it is present just below the brain. It is present just below the brain. Now, second point, it secretes many hormones. It secretes many hormones. Growth hormone is also one of the hormone which is secreted by pituitary gland. What is the function of this growth hormone? To elongate the muscles and arms, the muscles of the arms and legs, okay. To increase the muscles, bones, okay. Now, when this growth hormone is secreted in a proper proportion, then the growth will be appropriate, okay. And if the, this hormone is not secreted in the required amount, if the, if the, if this hormone is not secreted in the required amount, then what will happen? The person will remain rough. The person will remain rough and if it is over secreted children, if the quantity of this hormone, uh, you know growth hormone is very high, then what will happen children? Then the person will become a giant. Then the person will become a giant, okay? So this is what is about the pituitary gland. We'll just try and write, if it is possible to write over here, it is present just below the brain. Where it is present children? It is present just below the brain. Now what can be the second point? It secretes or it is also called as master gland. Okay, so what is this? It is present just below the, where it is present it is present just below the brain. Okay, this pituitary gland is present just below the brain and what it is known as children? It is known as master gland because the activity, the secretion of the other Hormones, okay, also depends upon the, like it has a control over the other glands also, okay. Now, what can be the third point children? That pituitary gland secretes many hormones out of which growth hormone is also very, very important. So, I will write, I will have to rub this. So, pituitary gland secretes growth hormone. If this growth hormone is not sufficient. If the growth hormone is not sufficient, then what will happen? The person will remain rough. And if this growth hormone is more than sufficient, then what will happen children? The person will become a giant. Isn't it? So, I will continue here. Okay, I have put an arrow that here third point I am writing over here. It secretes many hormones growth hormone is important one i'm writing just okay so growth hormone if less okay if less so the person will remain what draft Okay, if the growth hormone is more, then what will happen? The person will become a giant, isn't it? The
the person will become a giant. That is the thing which I am telling again and again children that the secretion of the hormones are in very less quantity but the effects are major but the effects are long lasting. Okay. So, we will just just out this three glands and then we will talk about the next one. So, what we are talking about children? Let me write the heading also over here. We are talking about endocrine glands. Okay, we are talking about endocrine glands. Now, when we talk about endocrine glands, we have different many endocrine glands with us. It can be pineal, it can be hypothalamus, it can be pituitary, it can be thyroid, it can be parathyroid, can be testes and can be ovaries, can be pancreas. Okay, so we are going to have a rough idea about all these glands. Okay, so the first gland is what we are talking about is pineal gland. Okay, the first gland which we are talking about is pineal gland. Now, what is the pineal gland children? It is what it is present in the brain and it is a vestigial organ or it can be, we can say that we do not know the function of this gland. Okay, now second gland is what children? It is hypothalamus gland. It control, it has got a control on the pituitary gland. Okay, now what third one? Third one we are talking about pituitary gland. Okay, now pituitary is very important gland. It is these two, pineal and hypothalamus are present in the brain. Pituitary is present below the brain. Okay, it is present here, below the brain. Now, it is also known as master gland. Okay, it is also known as master gland and and what else this is known as master gland why children why it is known as master gland because it controls various glands also activities of various glands are controlled by pituitary gland growth hormone is secreted by the pituitary gland if it is less the person remains dwarf and if it is more the person become giant okay so now after this this uh, we'll be discussing about the fourth gland okay so please note this point and then i'll be discussing we'll be discussing about the next uh, next gland okay